us in the first beaker we have to add extremely hot boiling water and in the second beaker we have to add cold water and then we have to ins invert two test tubes with two balloons attached to it understood or uh, two beakers are taken in one beaker we have added extremely hot water and in one beaker we have added extremely cold water and then we have inserted inverted two test tubes with balloons attached to it these balloons we can make it tight with a tape also so we have to attach balloons to the tubes then what happens air expands on heating balloon is inflated when boiling tube is placed in the hot water so when this boiling tube is placed in the hot water automat automatically the air will become hot right whatever air is there which goes from this tube to the up will be hot air then when the hot air enters the balloon it gets inflated that means increases in size whereas in the cold air when the cold air enters the tube and goes into the balloon there will be no inflation at all there will be deflation whatever air is there will go away because of cold water so air expands on heating balloon is inflated when boiling tube is placed in the hot water because air expands on heating hot air will go up and increase in size so that is the reason hot air will go up increased in size and increased the size of the balloon so that is how this balloon increased in size balloon is inflated when boiling tube is placed in the hot water but balloon is deflated in the cold water in the cold water what happens condensation happens so cold water usually go down when it rains due to condensation the cold water comes down in the form of rain right in the form of rain the water comes down to the sky so same way here cold water doesn't cold air doesn't expand doesn't occupy any much space that is why the balloon doesn't get inflated doesn't get any shape next one more example you have to take a wooden rod or a metal rod and then tie two paper bags with the help of thread then if you take a candle and start heating below this one paper bag the strip the paper bag which was straight will become tilted like this why because when you are heating above a candle the hot air is rising up as the hot air rises up it becomes lighter because warmer warm air rises up pushes the bag above the candle so when the warm air is rising up the bag which is present above the candle will still go up in the height thereby the wooden rod will become tilted so warm air is lighter than the cold air so warm air when it rises up it pushes the bag up so warm air is lighter than the cold air on heating the air expanded so when candle heated the air the air expanded and occupied more space as the air heats it expands and occupies more place here also same as the air got heated it expanded and gave space for the air to fill the balloon so as the air is heated because of the candle flame it expands occupies more space push the bag above so warm air rises up push the bag above the candle warm air is lighter than the cold air and on heating on heating always the air expands and occupies more space if you heat anything it expands and occupies more place so when it occupies more space again it becomes lighter so that is the reason smoke from the factories from the chimneys goes up in direction why because the air will be warmer warmer air when it goes up it will become lighter and occupy more space so anywhere there are factories there will be chimneys right pipe like chimneys up in the sky which give off its smoke that smoke will gradually spread why when it is rising the air is warm and when it goes to a certain height the air will become lighter and then it spreads it occupies more space so that is how air expands on heating smoke from the chimneys also come in the same way it comes through a pipe to the upper side because it is hot air hot air is warmer again when it reaches the certain height it becomes lighter and occupies more space thereby the sp smoke spreads into the sky so that is how air expands on heating wind currents are generated due to uneven heating of the earth the earth always gets heated up due to the sunlight so due to this uneven heating wind currents are generated so we'll see how so when uneven height when 
uneven heating occurs between equator and the poles what happens so equatorial region the region near the equator gets the highest amount of sunshine throughout the year throughout the year there will be lots of sunshine so due to this sunshine the air near the equator region gets heated up so due to this air near that equator gets heated up because there is always sunshine then what happens as the air gets heated up the heated warm air rises up always whenever the air gets heated it rises up and creates an area of low pressure so near the equator it will always be sunshine so due to this sunshine throughout the year there will be heat and due to this the air also gets heated up and the heated air warm air rises up and creates an area of low pressure so the cooler air from the higher altitudes rushes towards the equator to fill the gap so as the earth is heated the higher air the air rises up it gets heated up the warm air rises up so as the warm air rises up space will be created in the equator region then what happens the cold cooler air from the surroundings will come and fill this gap of the equator region this results in wind movement from the tropical zones to the equator so from the equator whenever the land is heated up the warm air rises up and when the warm air rises up there will be open empty space left this empty open space will be occupied by the colder air of the surroundings so this results in wind movement from the tropical zones to the equator so you wind usually moves from north to south direction only and sometimes changes in the direction occur because of the rotational movement of the earth because earth always rotates sometimes changes in the direction of the wind occur due to rotational movement of the earth and in this way always there is a change in the wind direction in earth always there is wind movement so the how now you have understood how between equator and the poles the wind movement occurs and uneven heating results in the wind movement so equator receives the highest amount of sunshine due to which land is always heated up as the land is heated the warmer air rises up and as the warmer air rises up there will be space in the equator now empty space left this empty space will be occupied by the colder air colder air coming from the tropical surroundings so that is how results in the wind movement from the tropical zones towards the equator then movement of air because of uneven heating of land and water till now we have seen heating of the equator in the poles now we will see the land and the water so during day time what happens there will be lot of sunlight so in the coastal areas nearer to the sea coastal areas means areas which are nearer to the sea land warms up faster than the ocean so during the day time in the coastal areas the land gets heated up due to the sunlight when compared to the air above the ocean the air above the land heat gets heated up faster in the day time then warmer air from the land rises up and creates an area of low pressure near the ground then what happens this low pressure zone is filled up by the cooler air from the ocean surface which gives rise to the sea breeze what happens in the day time the coastal areas which are nearer to the sea there will be heating up of the land completely because of the sunlight so in the day time the air above the land gets heated up faster than the air above the water that is ocean so what happens the air which is getting heated up above the land will go up heated up the air will become warm and go up into the sky then this empty space will be occupied by the cooler air from the oceans this will be happening in the day time that will lead to the sea breeze a air over the land gets heated up faster during the day time in the sunlight and that heated air goes up into the sky and then this space will be occupied by the cooler air above the oceans will come and flow to this land so that is how sea breeze is created in the day time then during the evenings what happens land breeze then during the night time land gets cooler slower so during the night time land cools faster than the ocean so what happens what is land breeze now during during the day time land land gets heated up faster so during the night time land cools faster than the ocean the air above the ocean cools slowly whereas the air above the land cools up faster during the evenings then 
warmer air from the ocean rises up creating an area of low pressure which is occupied by the air from the land so in the what is sea breeze during the sunlight sea breeze will occur air above the land gets heated up and goes up into the sky and the air will be occupied by the cooler air above the ocean surface it will flow into the area above the land then in this land breeze what happens as the sun sets during the evenings and the nights the air above the land gets cooled up faster and the air above the ocean gets cooled up later then what happens the air above the ocean is now warmer than the air above the land so the air above the ocean will rise up and go into the sky that empty space will be occupied by the cool air from the land the cool air from the land will flow to the ocean during the night time so that is a simple difference between the sea breeze and land breeze during the day time the air from the oceans will flow during day time the air from the oceans will come and flow into the land during night time the air from the land will go and fill up the oceans place because during the day time the air from the land will rise up and go and during the night time the air over the ocean will rise up and go up into the sky so that is the sea breeze and the land breeze now coming on to the monsoon so this flow of moist air from the ocean towards the land in the summer is called monsoonal wind or monsoons so flow of the air from the oceans towards the land in the summers is called monsoons monsoons are nothing but rainfall right the mo- the word monsoon comes from a arabic word called mausim and in india only it is called as monsoon nowhere else so whenever rainfall occurs in the mostly in the starting weeks of june it is known as monsoon is arriving in india so monsoon winds carry the water vapor which falls over the land so in the sea breeze and land breeze the air gets heated up and goes into the sky in the form of water vapor and when the water vapor reaches the clouds again it cools down and comes back in the form of rain so that is how monsoon winds carry the water vapor which falls over the land in the form of rain after cooling it down then in india the harvest depends mostly on the monsoon that is on the rainfall if there are no rains all the crops will dry up so rains are very necessary for our agriculture in india so that is how now we understood what is monsoon right the hot air which will be rising up will go up into the sky in the form of water vapor that is evaporation then after that it forms the cloud cools down and come back to the earth in the form of rain that is known as the monsoons next thing is thunder storm we many times hear thunder storms that is sounds in the sky right whenever it is raining very huge loud sounds those are called as thunder and you have some rhymes also in your nursery regarding the i hear thunder and other th- and others so how is thunder storm caused rain with lightning is known as the thunder storm everybody knows that right whenever there is rain there will be lightning the rain and the lightning together is known as thunder storm it usually happens during summers and usually in hot and humid tropical areas like india only so in summer the hot air rises up in the form of water vapor right along with the moisture content so after rising up it water vapor cools down and starts coming down in the form of water droplets that is nothing but rain and you know that is only water cycle also so swift swift drifting of water droplets creates electricity among the clouds so this immediate drifting of water droplets in the form of rain sometimes creates electricity among the clouds so this manifests in the form of lightning and sound and this is known as the thunder storm so swift to movement of this falling water droplets along with the rising air creates lightning and sound so always the water will be rising up in the form of water vapor on suppose thing one side water is rising up due to heating in the form of water vapor and other side rain is coming so this water vapor and this rising air along with this this rising air will be warm right and the falling rain will be colder so this colder air along with this hotter air which this cold water which is falling down water droplets rain the cold water droplets which are falling down in the form of rain the colder water along with this warm warm air rising up together combine and create some electricity and sound 
So that is only nothing but known as the thunder. So that is how thunderstorm occurs and thunder is caused. The water droplets will be cold and falling now in the form of rain. Whereas the hot water, hot air from the earth will be heated up and rising. And these two both meet, there will be some electricity created among the clouds. And this results in thunderstorm in the form of lightning and sound. This is how this event is known as the thunderstorm. Thank you.